Okay, how cool, in all honesty, in all honesty, I see the three jerseys that you're wearing here right now. The three shirts. Sorry, not jerseys. That's okay. Correct me. That was a total shock to me. Have the shirts we put on. That was that was like NFL, NBA kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was really cool. I didn't get one. From me, congratulations. Uh, I want to tell you, you gave uh, our your fellow students an amazing year to broadcast in an amazing district final game, which was which was super. I don't. I've done a lot of games, and that's probably one of the top. And even from both sides of the both both sides of the team, you know, the teams, mm -hmm. they're leaving, and they're their fans, even though they're on the short end of the stick. But they were like, "Oh my gosh, that was a, the best game I've ever seen in my life." I hope you I, I hope you like the gift. All right, great. The, the, and yeah, uh, go watch what a team! It. What a team win! It was a truly a team win. So. Very much so. Okay. Okay. Um, Taking a few moments before the practice, we're going to go ahead and have a chance to talk with our seniors and coach here. Coach, why don't you introduce your seniors to us? Yes, I'll go right down the line, and it's my great pleasure to introduce the senior class of 2021, the undefeated senior class thus far of 2021, the Northeast Eight champions of 2021, and the district champions of 2020, 2021. Okay, we'll go right, uh, we'll go, we'll, we'll work our way up from numbers. I'll start with number zero, Brandon Washington, right here. B. Wash. Number two, Aiden Slocum. Slocum. Number three, Trey Metzka. Number 10, Colin Ryan, don't be so nervous. <laughs> number 11, Keaton Kimball. He was number one in our hearts last year, but he moved down a little bit. <laughs> number 12, Luke Barker. And number 21, Billy Bloom. Thanks for taking time for me and us. Um, we're going to each ask a question of each of you and just respond honestly, okay? Um, they're kind of all over the place, so bear with me. Okay, Colin, we're going to start out with you. We're going to start out with COVID. Okay, unfortunate circumstance. We're coming up on one year of this whole debacle. Um, during summer, limited activities. One of the places you could actually go was to basketball practice or basketball open gyms. How do you think that impacted the team and the development of this group this year? I mean, I think it helped a ton. Like not only in the physical aspect, always being able to lift and shoot whenever we want, but as well as the mental aspect, getting to know each other better always being with each other we i mean we've been with each other four or five days every single week for about near like nine or ten months now so definitely helped with the mental aspect of it i mean just you know creating a bond that nobody could break and i mean it really helped with the undefeated season so great yeah and i'll piggyback on that you know what people don't realize is the commitment that these kids put in outside of the season we literally started on the hill outside the main gate here, the main door, with our first team meeting on June 1st. And like Colin said, we've been going four, mostly five days a week from June 1st up until today. That is a very long period of time, but we have accomplished so much and we've grown so much, not only as people, but as basketball players and as a team. And people don't understand all that goes into what they witnessed the other night. And I think that's also part of the reason why when you had a little glitch here or there or some issues, you guys were able to roll right with it and build right through it. So that was awesome. Okay, Billy in the back. Um, he brings through once a Wildcat, always a Wildcat. Returning Wildcat this year, your senior year. Um, how important or how special is it that you came back to be part of this special team and you played a huge role in securing the district championship Saturday? So tell me about that. What do you think? Um, I feel like this team is special because not only like we didn't play really good just this year, we've been together for years. We've known each other for years. We've been friends for a really, really long time. And <clears throat> for me and my role, uh, <clears throat> that's okay. <laughs> for, I mean, for me and my role, it, it was huge. You know, I on I honestly thought. We were going to close it out at first, and everything was going to go smoothly, but it's all right. That's not, that's not what happened, and we were able to come in there and just hold it down and secure the win. That's good. And like you said, 
I thought we were going to end it once, <laughs> twice. Took us three times, but that's okay. It, was, it worked. It worked for us. Um, do you have anything else you want to say about Billy? No, uh, I mean, you know, and it goes to all of the guys in here, and I can say this after everybody speaks, but what people don't understand, when you have a year like we've had, where you're 25 and 0, and, and these are things we've discussed, going down the stretch, each and every one of these young men have had a role, a significant role, in winning games. You never know what type of adversity is going to hit and when it's going to hit. And the one thing that these guys have done a tremendous job of is always being ready. I can look at each and one of the, at least these three, and I can tell you in their heart of hearts, would they like to have played more minutes on a nightly basis? Absolutely. Have they ever let that bother them? Absolutely not. When the bell rang against McDonald, he stepped up and he was ready to help us, and that was a huge moment in the second half of that game. When the bell rang the other night, these two guys had had to play extended minutes in an environment that they've never been in. And they came up huge for us, and that's because they prepare every single day. And that's one of the life lessons I hope that they take away from this year. I mean, and that was that was your best competition up to this point. No right? question. In my opinion. So no you question. guys, a bold, yeah. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Trey, you ready? Yeah, right. Okay, Thursday, we go up against St. Vincent, St. Mary. Um, we all know they've got a huge reputation, and unfortunately, you know, some people might think of uh, David versus Goliath. But other than score more points, how's the Strelzer Wildcats going? How are we going to win that game on Thursday? That's an interesting question, because to be honest, I kind of thought about a game like this for a while. Even though when I was younger, I always thought we'd be playing Brawny. He'd be there. But <laughs> other than that, uh, you know, it, we're in this scenario, like you said, for the first time. It's a, David yeah, versus Goliath, everybody knows St. V's. We're seen as like an underdog for really the first time all season. We've been looked at as a favorite, for, for you know, just for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, so to say that coming into this game is kind of interesting. But I think the keys are just going to be doing what we've always done and playing the way we play. I mean, obviously we need to refine things on the defensive side, I think. Maybe give up a little bit less than 108 points. <laughs> but not just do what we do, keep moving the ball, keep playing hard keep playing together, and I think we'll hopefully we'll like how it ends. Bring it, yeah, bring it home. That would be fabulous. And actually, that gave me goosebumps. That's good. That's very good. And you know what? Like you said, we've not been the underdog all year. This is a this is kind of a new new thought for us. But you know what? Coming so off of Saturday's game, it. I know. Coming off of Saturday's game, I just told you that nothing surprises me. What you guys can do, so <laughs> amazed. Okay, Luke. There you are. Hi, hi. Okay, Luke. Take us back to Saturday's game. As we were talking a little bit about it, extended time, people following out. What went through your head? And it's okay to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, in a game like that, double overtime, you had multiple people foul out. The crowd was going crazy. You can really, I I can speak for all of us. One thing. Just get out of there with a win, and that's what we ended up doing. And every single person in this room and the rest of our team, we all stepped up, and every single one of us played a part. It was the greatest game that I've ever been a part of in my whole life. Okay, and I was just going to say, I mean, yeah. has anyone else ever experienced in anything like that? No. Coach? I mean, I, I've experienced games maybe not quite like that, but as it, it not as the head coach. Like the, your your experience, a lot of times dictated by whatever your role in in that game is. Um, you know, as players, the way they view it is going to be different than the way I view it. Mm -hmm. Their experience on the floor was different than what my experience was on the bench. You know, I've been a part of a lot of huge games in my lifetime. Most of them as an assistant coach. It's a lot different when you're there making the decisions and 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 putting people in positions to hopefully be successful as opposed to just giving advice or actually being on the floor and, and asked to execute those things. So um, to answer the question, no, I've never been a part of anything like that in the role that I was in, and it was it was every bit as special as, as their experience. Yeah, but again, the phrase is not suited for TV at this moment. However, I couldn't <laughs> just keep saying holy expletives because it was crazy. <laughs> okay, all right, Aiden. It's our opportunity 
take care of you. You cutting that hair? No, no, not me. Okay, Tom. <laughs> okay, one of the things, and, and we've all seen it, you play so aggressively at times. I often say, play like your hair's on fire. Drive the hoop, try for that aim one. How do you control what everybody else to, seems like is chaos? How do you control, especially when you might be going to the line, how do you control that? Um, well, you know, um, my grandpa tells me a lot that um, I was born with a tremendous talent of, you know, body control in the air and being a tremendous athlete. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of natural things that you don't really think about um, going through your mind. Um, so, I don't really, like, it's nothing you can really train for, you know, when you're in the air like that. It's just all, like, kind of a natural thing that you just... Have you seen any of the pictures of you right up there? Of you, um, yeah. I mean, you were, like, literally, yeah. oh, yeah, they're all over. I mean, but, the most, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's just, it's just, like, you just, something going through your head, like, you know, you just got to make sure you get the bucket. It doesn't matter what's going on. You just got to make sure you get the end one. Fun. It's definitely fun to watch. Yeah, thank you. I and you scare it. the crap out of all of us. <laughs> okay, Keaton, before I hit the coach, come to you. You ready? Yeah. Okay, unfortunately, it's kind of spinning off the whole COVID thing. Because of COVID, we've had limited fans this year. Hasn't been the best atmosphere for the rest of you. However, these last two games, great, especially this last game. The, the energy in the field house these last two games was huge. Did you notice? Uh, well, <laughs> just a little bit. And, and how do you think it impacted the team's energy as well, far as the game goes? Well, unlike most of these guys, uh, I had to play freshman basketball. So when you're there, there's not much energy. You know, that, that's, that's family in the stands, no, nothing else. So, so you recognize the difference? Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of us have never experienced a game like that. I mean, I remember one point I went to the free throw line. I heard the student section yelling our teammates' names when they were shooting. So like just everything, like our student section being out there for like the first time all season, it was just great. Like it was, we definitely fed off of it. I mean, Luke did especially. The first times you could just see it in his face, all the excitement. I mean, I mean, it was it was chaotic, but was it fun? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was I mean, blast. I mean. Again, I'm glad you enjoyed it because the rest of us are <laughs> All right, Coach, I got one for you. Gotcha. I know you and the team are focused on our next game, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's. But at the end of this season, hopefully after a trip to Dayton, um, how do you think these boys will look back and realize that they have made Wildcat and OHSAA history? You know, I think it'll be a while before everybody appreciates like the, the goal part of it. Um, you know, and, and these guys have heard me talk about it before the season started. Like, we don't, the things that you're going to remember during the season are not, they're not going to remember, like, specific games. They're going to, there's going to be moments. And a season is just a string of moments as you go along. So, we've had a ton of moments this year that they're going to remember. Practicing the first day of the year in the arena at Cleveland, getting the opportunity to go back and play in the arena in Cleveland, um, cutting down nets twice so far, um, which we're not done with yet, but there's all, it's all of the little moments that as they build, that's what these guys will take away from the year. Not necessarily the, the championship stuff because that goes on a wall and, and, and that's for you know posterity and all that other stuff, but um, you know my, my job and my goal is to just give them as many opportunities to have as many moments throughout the year that they can take with them forever. So super. And Bwash, you didn't get out of this, so I'm sure you I'm sure you thought it was done. This one was my favorite favorite to actually create my question here. In the past four years, the fans and I have seen you develop into quite a mature, selfless player taking on whatever role was needed for the team at any particular time. How do you adjust to the different roles and responsibilities from game to game? Because you play a lot of roles. How do you know, or how do you adjust? I don't know, I get just from over the years of uh, playing varsity so much, and experiencing when I'm in a game, and uh, sometimes you're out there, you don't know what, what your job is. So I guess over the years, I just learned that if you're on the court, you got a, you got a job, you got a role to do. So. Um, yeah.
Do you find yourself that you adjust your job even in the game? Yeah, I'm just do, I'm willing to do anything to win. So if I got to score two points and have 12 assists, I'm willing to do that. If I got to score 26 points and have two assists, I'm willing to do that. How many times did you go to the line Saturday? Uh, 19 times. Oh, okay, that's just not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, thank you for taking the time for me. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys set this place on fire on Thursday. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Let's go.